Well, hello, beautiful people of the interwebs. Wayne Hackman here, a.k.a. Waxstar. And, um, well, I'm ashamed to say I bought another radio. So, forgive me. I'm in a broom cupboard. I'm not in the normal Waxstar studio in Kenya. I'm actually on furlough or... I'm in a long vacation period back in the UK. We always come back as a family to the UK for a couple of months in the British summer, uh, which is great. We love to see family chomping at the bit to get back to Kenya and to get back to my studio and all the HF radio stuff that I enjoy doing. And one of the things I love to do is to throw one of these in my, my luggage. It's a, a Bofang UV5R. They're a lovely little radio, I know in the world. They have a bit of a reputation for being cheap and nasty. That's one of the reasons why I like them actually. If you bust one or destroy one, it's not a, a bad thing. You can go and get another one. I like to throw them in a backpack for when I go uh, hiking and just to see if I can hear anybody. And it, the spectrum of listening is, is quite broad on this, which is great. But I don't always get access to repeaters very easily when I'm in the UK on them. Uh, and, um, you know, there's a few locations where we spend our time over the summer. And I wanted to get something with a little bit more powerful. And this Retvis uh, boasts 25 watts. I've also bought a, a sort of cheapish VHF, UHF antenna that I can sort of precariously prop up around the place uh, or put into the car very easily. And so I wanted to give this a try. This, this another Chinese radio, of course, which is a, has a little bit more power, a few more features. And of course, I uh, wanted to just take you on this journey. Remember, I'm still very new to the hobby and I'm sure that there are better unboxings, better explanations about this, but let's get to it and have a little look. So before I get to looking at the Retvis, I think that's how you pronounce it. I wanna just show you these two radios here. Now these are Bofangs. This is a Bofang UV5R. This is a variant of the Bofang. UV5R, you can get various different antennas or microphone options. I've even got an extended battery as well. Now in the ham radio community, from what I understand, people have a love-hate relationship with them. They are cheap, they are cheerful, uh, they are perhaps a little bit overrated on power and what they're able to do, but they are in essence, very cheap radios that can get you on the air. And I love these things because I often throw one of these in a backpack when I go hiking or walking. Uh, you can get onto VHF, you can get onto UHF, uh, and um, you can you can make some contacts. It's also there for a, you know, an emergency. I know that a lot of preppers will have these in their backpacks as well. You can not only use the ham radio frequencies as well, but you can set them up to listen in to other bits and pieces that, that can help you. They also have an FM radio in there as well. I absolutely love these. I think bang for buck, they're amazing. Great opportunity for people to get into ham radio using VHF and UHF. Very programmable, very, very enjoyable to use. But they are only, so this one boasts that it's eight watts. This one boasts it's six watts. We'll be honest, they probably don't put much more than five watts out each uh, on high power. And what I've found is if continuing use is that they overheat or certainly one of, this one overheats a little bit and then stops transmitting or this one drops down to the lower power rate. So I've been thinking to myself, well, actually, let's look to upgrade this radio. I don't want to spend a huge amount of money on VHF. Instead, um, because I don't use it very often. So I'm thinking about putting this in the car. And then I know in Kenya, there's one repeater. Uh, and actually where I am at the moment, I'm actually in the United Kingdom in Kent and there's a repeater close by that hopefully I've borrowed a leisure battery. Hopefully we can get this transmitting today and to see what it sounds like. So this is the Retvis. And this is a UHF VHF radio. This is the model RT95. And this boasts that it can push up to 25 watts of power and it can be mounted into a vehicle it's small enough to be thrown into a backpack or if you want you can add this into your your shack and so this is the a9129b option and of course again much like the bofangs this is chinese and pick this up for less than 100 pounds actually i got some discount discount on it which i thought was great for a 
uh, you know, slightly more powerful uh, VHF UHF transceiver. So let's just have a quick look inside and see what we've got. Of course, we have the destructions. Um, every ham knows that, you know, you need to read these or throw them away and then make mistakes and then go to the menu. This is the radio itself. And, um, you know, that's my hand. So, you know, it's not huge um, in comparison to a Bofang. Here's a Bofang there. It's, uh, you know, uh, perhaps three bo Bofangs in size. Depth wise, again, you can see, you know, my finger there, depth wise is you've got some programmable sections here, a volume uh, adapter function key here. And then at the back, you have got an external speaker out. You've got a PL259 connector. And of course, you've got a fused um, connector here uh, that, um, that can be plugged into, uh, plugged into uh, various other bits and pieces to get your power. I'll be putting that onto a 12 volt in a moment as well. What else do you have in here as well? Let's have a, a quick look. Or you get a, a, a slightly larger power cable that can be used, which obviously goes into the female version of the connector that's on the radio. You get yourself this nice little handset. Now, I think people love or hate these. You've got a lot of options on here to control it. I guess that flicks between the AB listen. I think, you know, you can dial in frequencies here as well. Uh, probably LEDs to show you where you are. And a push to talk there as well. And on this side as well, it looks like you can move the frequency and I'm not sure what this does. Maybe this it changes, uh, maybe this changes the, um, uh, I don't know, the, um, uh, the type of microphone that's in there, the sound. Of course, there's a speaker in there as well. Uh, so that's quite useful if you're installing this into a car. What else do you get? What I liked about this when I was looking to this, it actually sends you a USB data cable, which I'm, I'm assuming can be used to program. I'm wondering if this could be used with Chirp or something like that. You can dial in a whole load of frequencies, that, uh, which is great because I've got a whole load of frequencies in, a, in, in the Bofang that I can hopefully move across. And you also get so, uh, mountain screws. There's a spare fuse in there. And also you've got yourself a, a, a clamp there that can be used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this up into a leisure battery and see if we can make some contact so you guys can hear what it sounds like and uh, well, make an informed decision whether or not, you know, if you're getting into the hobby, this is something that you want to, to, to spend, I don't know, maybe a hundred dollars, a hundred quid on, um, you know, nothing horrendously expensive. And again, much like the Bofangs, if it all goes horribly, horribly wrong, you know, you haven't got too much to worry about being lost. Although 100 quid is quite a lot of money to lose. Let, let's get this wired up and see what we can find. So I quickly wired it to that leisure battery and was pleasantly surprised to see the radio boot up with no trouble at all. Retavis, which I've now found out is the correct way of pronouncing it, opens up with this lovely bright screen and the machine is very, very configurable. But of course, like any amateur radio expert, well, not really, I started to play with the radio without reading the instructions and I quickly found out that actually when you hit that function button there's a huge amount in the software that will enable you to program this radio to do whatever it is that you want to do. Now what I'm really curious is that actually I wanted to see if this worked with Chirp so I downloaded the latest version of Chirp and I plugged the included serial cable or serial to USB cable in and uh, then opened up Chirp and uh, um, it worked. It worked. And I was able to copy some of the repeaters that I had programmed into my Bofang over to the the Retavis. Uh, it took a couple of times to work out that actually the Retavis has on Chirp a couple of versions. It's got the RT95 and then the RT95 Vox. I originally started working with the RT95, couldn't work out why it wasn't working, moved over to the Vox and, and it worked fine. And I was able to program the radio pretty quickly with all the repeaters that were local to where I I was and um, and I was able to start making contact now the radio when you're manipulating it uh, through
chirp will show you this PC mode. So it's obviously at this point receiving data or or um, reading data, and so you know that it, it's talking to the radio. It's that um, signal that your computer and radio are operating together. So let's have a listen to one of my first contacts on that repeater. Golf for Echo Delta Juliet. This is um, to Echo Zero Foxtrot X Ray Yankee. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to my call. Uh, my name is Wayne Whiskey Alpha Yankee November Echo, just uh, situated in the small village just outside Tunbridge Wells, place called Spell Test. You're coming in really, really clear uh, to Echo Zero Foxtrot X Ray Yankee. Over. Two Echo Zero Foxtrot X Ray Yankee Golf Four Juliet Echo Delta G Four J E D. Okay, fine. Well, um, I was just going to check on the uh, input um, because uh, you're not too far away. The location here is um, Hildenborough, um, so um, I imagine that I might be able to hear you on the uh, input. Um, did I say the name is Keith uh, Kilo Echo India Tanker Hotel? And uh, running Ken Watts at the moment into the code. And I heard you calling a couple of times when I was downstairs. Just uh, came up here to uh, to the shack and uh, wanted to uh, get back to you. So um, um, yeah, I put calls through from time to time through KN um, and uh, RE and MH, but um, the bands are quiet, aren't they? Um, so uh, okay, uh, Wayne. So uh, I want to know for home QDH or whether you've just stopped up there in a car park or something. Um, get rid of um, height. That's um, quite a high spot, isn't it? Um, and uh, relatively, I'm uh, quite low down. Uh, thank you uh, from G4JED. Okay, so let's sum up. I'm impressed. I know Chinese radios get a bit of a bad reputation from time to time. Remember, I bought this sub £100, and I actually even think I got a discount on Amazon when I bought it. I've then coupled it with another cheap 20 quid UHF VHF antenna. I've got it precariously stuck out of the window at the, my location here in the United Kingdom and I've hit two repeaters with success and had some lovely conversations with those people. I haven't had a direct station to station yet and I think in fairness those days are few and far between. Uh, you need to get some heights on those but for repeater access it's fantastic and it's well enjoyable to use a little bit more powerful than the bowfangs uh, a lot more powerful actually than the bowfangs as i reckon i'm getting about four to five watts out of those bowfangs where this boasts 25 watts and the reports i've had is that the audio is clean we can't really talk about power and the distance that it's got out because i've hit repeaters and of course the repeaters access or pass on those information I've been able to program it very, very easily with with uh, Chirp, and I've actually, you know, copied some of those settings that I've already preset in my Bofang radio over with relatively ease. It seems packed with lots of features, and I need to spend some time diving into the menus and working out if I can do some more great stuff with it, which I'm sure I can. And so, so far, so good. So hopefully that helps you in understanding a little bit about the radio. It's a first look, a first example of what it does. I'm by no means a professional yet when it comes to radio communications, but for me, it's a good little radio to play around with when I'm in the UK to make some contacts and just enjoy spending time on the VHF and the UHF bands. Well, thanks for watching. As always, please rate and subscribe. Do all of the things that YouTubers do I'll catch you in the next video.